from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Global Partner Network. Welcome everyone to theCUBE Live covering AWS reInvent 2020. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. Today we are joined by Joshua Burgeon. He is the general manager at AWS Outpost. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, Joshua. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you. So tell our viewers a little bit about AWS, Out AWS Outpost. Oh, sure, it's uh, one of my favorite subjects, obviously. So Outpost is a service from AWS that allows you to use the same tools, technology, APIs, you know, programming interfaces that you do in the cloud, but install this and run it on your own premises or in a co-location facility. So it really extends the reach of AWS to far more locations than you could otherwise use it. So what are some of the advancements uh, this year? It's, it's been an amazingly you know, busy year, even under unprecedented kind of circumstances where we've uh, tried to turn the crank really hard and deliver value for our customers. We increased the number of countries you could order outposts in up to 51 countries. You can now connect outposts to all 22 AWS regions and our GovCloud regions, uh, everything outside of China. And we delivered 15 new services or incremental features, including uh, S3 on outposts, which was the top thing that customers asked for, but also our application load balancer, ElastiCache, our relational database service, RDS. Uh, you know, there's probably more that I'm, I'm missing here, but, uh, you know, and we're definitely not slowing down in that regard. 2021 will probably be an even bigger year. So tell us a little bit about the, the response from customers since the launch of AWS Outpost last year. What are, what are you hearing? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're hearing a lot. Uh, I, I think we've been pleasantly surprised by the, the breadth and the depth of the customer use cases. One of the biggest things we heard from people was, you know, the, the outposts are great, but it's a, it's a full rack of compute or many racks of compute in some cases and storage. You know, there are locations that people wanted to put it in that were smaller, where they're space constrained, maybe a restaurant or a factory floor or a you know, small medical facility, uh, you know, a telco, like a cell site. And, and so what we did uh, based on that is something that we actually just announced in Andy's keynote uh, just a few days ago here, which is the new small form factor outposts that are 1U and 2U size uh, servers. It's about the size of one or two pizza boxes stacked on top of each other. So that's even gonna make outposts available to even more use cases. Uh, you know, er early on, uh, we kind of said to ourselves that it's important to kind of give people that consistent experience wherever they might need the compute and the storage and the other services. And so I've been I've been really pleasantly surprised, as I mentioned earlier, by how many people have talked to us. We have customers like Philips Healthcare. They are uh, they're bringing their medical imaging solution to Outposts, and it allows them to kind of modernize the way they deliver services to hospitals and medical research centers around the world something that really wouldn't be possible without having AWS everywhere. And that is much, much needed today. Um, so tell us a little bit about more about this year in particular. You said it yourself at the beginning of our conversation, this is an unprecedented year for so many different reasons. How has the COVID-19 pandemic affected AWS Outposts and how your team interacts with customers and, and gets your job done? Yeah, we, I think we have some unique you know, challenges in that regard. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, AWS outposts are installed in a co-location facility or on a customer's own premises in a data center you know, or other things like that. So obviously we have to get our technicians out there to roll them in and hook them up to your network and you know, to get them powered up. So that means that we are complying with uh, COVID restrictions in, as I mentioned, 51 different countries. So there was even an install earlier this year at a mining location, uh, you know, far outside the U.S., where we had to get technicians working with uh, local technicians from the customer, following COVID guidelines, wearing protective gear, and actually installing the outpost, uh, you know, using kind of satellite connectivity and phones to phone home and talk to us during the installation, of course, because it's not hooked up yet. So those are just kind of examples of the, the lengths to which we'll go to make sure that, of course, we're safe, the customers are safe, 
but that they can kind of continue to modernize their application portfolio and get benefits from the outposts. And what are you hearing from clients and customers in terms of how they're thinking about their technology needs now and in the coming year? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, it, it really varies by market segment. So you have customers like Ericsson and Telefonica. They're going to be using Outpost to uh, kind of run their 5G packet core technology. It, it, it's got to be run at the edge, right? They're telcos. They need to minimize latency, single digit milliseconds. Or you might have a customer like Lockheed Martin. And what they've told us is they have projects that are subject to government contracts and regulations. And not only do they have, of course, compliance regimes like FedRAMP that they need to be aware of, but there's data residency requirements. So whether they're deploying in the United States or you know, with our allies all around the world, the compute and the storage, they, they need to run in specific locations. So now outposts are going to be a key uh, advancement and kind of a key differentiator for them in how they deliver services to their customers and still meet those data residency or compliance requirements. Joshua, tell our viewers more about AWS Outpost Ready. Oh, that's uh, it's another thing I'm really glad you mentioned. So the Outpost Ready program, th these are uh, solutions from our APN, our Amazon AWS partner network that are uh, validated and following our best practices on AWS Outposts. They're certified to work and you know, they're generally available to customers. And so it's a program where you know, ISVs and SaaS providers can ensure that the uh, technology that they provide, th this third-party technology, is going to work in the Outpost environment. And, and there's, there's something about Outpost that I, I think makes this uh, a differentiator and, and uniquely valuable. When I mentioned kind of that consistent hybrid experience, when you think about how Outposts are deployed, you know, in a customer's data center, might, maybe alongside other technology they're already using, and so customers say, look, these AWS services are great, but I already use a variety of you know, third-party technology, maybe from Veritas or Trend Micro, Palo Alto Networks, Commvault, SciSense, PagerDuty, Pure Storage, NetApp, right? You know, the list is actually pretty extensive of what people are already using. And so they've said, you know, I, I do plan on using AWS services, but I also don't want to give up uh, you know, what, what my team is already familiar with. So can you make sure that's going to work for me, whether I'm using it in the region or on the AWS outposts? And so the, the, the interest and kind of demand for this, both from customers and the enthusiasm from the partners, has been off the charts. We started the program in just September, which is not that long ago, and we had 32 partners. And uh, as of today, we have an additional, uh, additional 25 partners, right? It's 57 partners total, 64 certified solutions. So that, that's a lot of momentum in just kind of a, a short amount of time. And, and I'm, I'm really happy that we can deliver that to the customers. So it does, it, it's already showing tremendous momentum. How do you think about it in terms of the primary benefits that it gives to customers and how it helps customers and partners? Yeah, I think, you know, in order to qualify, the solution has to be tested and validated a uh, uh, against a bunch of uh, criteria that we have, very specific technical criteria, security requirements, operational, and, you know, they're, they're supported for customers with clear deployment guidelines. So, you know, the customers can kind of think of this as a guarantee that we're not just saying maybe this could work, but, but this will work. If you're already using it, it's going to continue to work in a way that's familiar to you. And, and again, that's important, that consistent hybrid experience, whether you're using uh, a solution from a third party or from AWS, whether you're using it in the region or on a local zone or in a wavelength zone, some of our other you know, kind of innovative infrastructure deployments, or you're using it on an outpost, no matter where you're using it, it has to work the same way. And so th this is something that customers have said, I want to be able to get up and running quickly. We had a customer, Riot Games, uh, they're the maker of, of League of Legends, but also when they were launching their new game, Valorant, uh, in, in June of 2020, they deployed outposts in four different locations to kind of ensure a level playing field in terms of latency. And what they told us, uh, you know, very much like the Service Ready program, is they were able to get up and running in just a matter of days once the outpost was deployed. And it's because we gave them those same APIs, that same tooling. So I think that's really important for people. And you know, I, I hope we can continue to deliver on that promise. So to close this out here, I want you to look into your crystal ball and, and think ahead 12 and 24 months when 
you know, fingers crossed, things are back to somewhat more normal. Uh, what, what's in store for AWS Outposts? Yeah, I mean, we're going to deliver on what we announced here at reInvent, which is the new small form factor outposts. And I think what we're going to continue to do is listen to customers. We developed outposts from the very beginning because customers said, could, could you deploy outposts in our, in our data center? Or sorry, can you deploy AWS in our data center? It didn't have a name back then. And so that's really the hallmark of AWS. You know, somewhere around 90% of our roadmaps are based on what customers tell us they want. Then the other 10% is when we kind of look around the corner and hopefully delight people with something they didn't even know they needed. And, and I really hope for my team and uh, that that's what 2021 and 2022 brings is you know, more countries, more services, more value, more compliance certifications, you know, all the things that people tell us they want, we're gonna keep turning the crank as hard as we can and delivering that as quickly as possible. With the trademark Amazon customer delight. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Well, Joshua Virgin, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure having you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. I'm Rebecca Knight. For more of theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, stay tuned.